Hello and welcome to Optus Stadium for the close of play on day three of this first test of the Border Gavaskar Trophy between India and Australia. And my goodness, what a day it has been. I'm Izzy Westbury, he's Brad Haddon. And Hads, you're going to take us through that day. Well, where, where do I start? It's been a phenomenal day's test cricket. It's actually been a phenomenal test match so far. But where we started with India getting bowled out for 150, taking a nearly a 50-run lead into their batting, and the way they played with the bat. We've seen young Jazawal get his fourth test 100. What's that, three over 150? No, four, four, over, four, four over scores 150. over 150. And Virat Kohli, he broke the drought, 100. But I tell you what, we've got a special guest here today, and I want to bring this man in. He's got one of the sharpest, quickest minds around. We've heard it on Triple M Cricket. But, Tubby, there was some unbelievable batting, and that's what it's been about the last couple of days. But this last session of play doesn't happen without Boomer. Not his bowling, his aggressive captaincy. Absolutely. We can only assume that, that he told Natish Reddy when he went out there, let's get on with it. I want to have a bowl tonight. We were chatting about it on air on Triple M that um, there was two things you could have done. Just played it out normally. Had a lead of 500. Um, Virat Kohli would have been close to 100, maybe maybe just got his 100 at, at 6 o'clock tonight. But he said, no, get out there, play some shots and bring Virat with you. And Virat did, and he got on with it and got to his 100. They had, what, 30 minutes or just under to Australia to, to have a bowl at them. And what have they been rewarded with? Three for 12. With Marnus out, McSweeney out. Patrick Cummins came out to try to do the captain's thing. Hold out, he's also out. So they've now made their job so much easier tomorrow, all because of a bit of brilliant captaincy yeah. and proactive captaincy. And at times we don't see enough of it in Test cricket, so Jasper Boomer, well done this afternoon. And that's the one thing we've seen looking from our box. We, we've seen Boomer on the bench. He was quite animated with Virat Kohli. And with his stand in the game, he's been a past Indian captain. That would have been really easy. If they had to let the game drift, they've got two days to bowl Australia, and it probably would have happened. Yeah. Sorry, Izzy, it probably would have happened. But he was proactive. He wanted the game to move forward. And that's what we've been crying out for, aggressive captains that understand the importance of getting tactics right. Yeah, and people get carried away with individual milestones. Yeah, okay, well, Virat's got, now got 30 test match hundreds and he's still got it anyway. Now, if Virat had got out for 85 or 90 and, and India still had that time to bowl, then it's a win because those three wickets, as I said, are absolute gold. They're much more important than an extra 15, 20 runs because that could save them hours tomorrow. It could mean 100, 200 runs tomorrow if Manus could come out tomorrow and dig in. But he hasn't been able to chance to do that because he's out the last ball of the day. You keep the game moving, you keep the opposition under pressure, particularly when you got them down and you get reward. So at times everyone's got to realise that the game is about winning and losing yeah. first and foremost. And the individual milestones come, in my opinion, way down there, a long way down. Hads, Tubby, I feel almost evil saying this, but I almost wanted to see an alternate universe where... Virat Kohli didn't quite get to his 100 in the time. He had to get there by 5.20. That was the yeah. cutoff. And I had this sort of idea of, OK, maybe he's on 98 not out. I reckon, and we're talking back to this kind of vicious, no-holds-barred captaincy of Bumrah, yeah. I reckon he would have declared. I well, don't know. I hope so. Yeah. And, and I hope that And people talk about social media and what might happen for people and back in India watching this podcast. They might say, oh, terrible thing. Virat didn't get his 100 because he played a big shot. But remember, remember this moment, because this is what you do it for. In there at the moment, India would be absolutely not quite celebrating because they haven't won the test just yet, but they're on the verge of winning a test match because they've kept Australia down from about tea time on day one with positive cricket. Firstly with the ball, then batting yesterday. Jaswal was terrific yesterday and, and again today. Um, making scores, but making them quickly and then sensing an opportunity to put Australia's top order under pressure, and they've been struggling. Keep that going, keep that mindset, you're hard to beat. Well, Mark Taylor, thank you. On behalf of Willa Talk, we'll set up a bar tab for you tonight. We don't let anything <laughs> go for free. So thank you very much. Great insights. That's why he's got one of the best tactical minds in the game. Thanks, well, I'm rushing back now to start it up <laughs> without you. <laughs> Oh, Hads, what a privilege to have had uh, Mark Tubby-Taylor, former Australian captain there, giving his insight into something that is... He might be a stand-in captain at the moment, Bumra. He's captain once before. Obviously, Rohit Sharma, we actually saw images of him coming back into Australia, so we expect him to take up the reins again. But this is someone for the future, and I think we've seen the template for a fast bowler captain in Pat Cummins. I think it'll be sooner rather than later 
that Bumrah will in fact be the the true captain of India. Well, well, Test cricket's all about winning little moments. And why that decision today was such a big decision. You've got Nathan McSweeney. He's in his first Test match. And the last thing you want to do is go out there and face Boomer for five overs. You've got nothing to, to gain out of that at all. You've got the um, shadows coming over the ground. And if they do get a wicket there, Marnus Labuschagne. He hasn't been in the great form. And if you're doing all your analytics in your team meetings, you're asking the right questions, looking for the right things. They're the little moments you can't miss. If you miss those moments and all of a sudden he gets his 100 half an hour into tomorrow, things calm down, they get the roller, it's hot, it's hard work. But you know out there you've got to walk into the fire and you've got half an hour on nothing to gain. You can gain nothing out of that half an hour and, and well done to India. Well, we've had the opportunity to talk about Jasper Bumrah, the captain. We'll get on to Jasper Bumrah, the bowler, no less potent in a minute. But there's a lot to get through before that. And I'm going to start with, well, a young prodigy. We talk about him being the next big thing. I think he's already yep. the big thing because Jayaswal... Another century, another score beyond 150. Only one man in Test cricket has managed his first four scores of, or scores of three figures or more to have gone beyond 150. That's Graham Smith. I'll tell you what, he looked a damn sight better than Graham Smith out there, Hads. Yeah. I'll tell you what he, he did do well. And, and the one thing we knew, we knew he had an attacking game. We, we, we've seen how he's gone about his, his cricket in the IPL since he started his Test cricket, the way he played against India. And, and he's got a phenomenal attacking range. But what we learnt today and over the last couple of days is he's got tempo in his game also. He was able to play situations, he's allowed to let good bowling go through. There was times Josh Hazelwood was a nightmare to face out there. He's going past the outside head, he was hitting him on the body and he got through that. He, he did have, I think, that made a huge role was Cahill Rahul at the other end. And I think when you have that senior play, and you can't underestimate someone who's toured Australia, understands the conditions here, but all, also understand on how hard it is to win here. And when you get the opportunity to grind Australia into the dirt, don't let that go. And that's exactly what the young man did today. Well, I'll take nothing away from K.L. Rahul's knock, 77 from a 176, and he looked really good out there. A wonderful partnership between the two of them. But how about the way in which he got to his three figures? That was a shot and a half, wasn't it? Well, how do you describe that? He scored the run on the leg side for six, but he shaped to ramp the ball over second slip and just changed the angle of his bat and it went to fine leg for six. That, that's extremely talented. It, it, I haven't seen anyone play that way for, for some time. He does say leg side of the ball. It'll be interesting to see how the Australians attack him next time. They've had a really good look at him now. He does stay leg side. He cuts off the stumps. They might have to come tighter at his body and under his arms. We've seen him get dropped down leg side, but the, the way he brought that six up, that, that was just all class and not many players, if any in the world, can do that. Talking about seeing what Australia are going to try and do to undo Jai as well, can you see any technical flaws then? Oh, no technical force, um, but you, you've got to find a way to shut his scoreboard down. And the one thing he does, he's got a very correct stand, he's very side on, and, and maybe a, a form of attack is to go and aim under his arm. We, we've seen him, as I said before, Kerry got a glove down leg side, he, he just made it, but he does like to cut off the stumps. The late Phil Hughes played a lot like that. He was a nightmare to bowl with because he, he thought he'd give you his stumps and he'd cut the ball off the stumps. Maybe they need to come tighter at his body. Well, there's one option. Good luck, I say, to Australia. Because yeah. the other thing, I mean, there's, there's stats galore here because he's only 22 years of age and there's only one player with more than four 150-plus scores before the age of 23. And, of course, it's the great Don Bradman. Now, Jai Oswald turns 23 on the 28th of December this year. Before that, we're going to Adelaide, we're going to Brisbane, and we're halfway through the Melbourne Test. There's plenty of opportunities to get another 150 on the board. And you just think that Virat Kohli, he made his debut in 2011. Jai Oswald was born in 2001. He wasn't even in double figures when Kohli was making his debut. And I guess Kohli passing the baton to Jai as well. Kohli receiving the baton from someone like Sachin Tendulkar. Is there anyone in particular that he reminds you of? The great man himself? Jazz, well, well the, the one he does remind me a little bit of is probably Ganguly. Is, he, he likes to give himself a little bit of room, cuts off the stump. So Australia have had a good look at him now. Um, they, they would have done their footage. They would have had first-hand experience now. But it, it, it's hard to find a, too many flaws when you play like that. But your first innings, 
test match in Australia on a surface that is foreign to him. This is as foreign a surface that Jazawala play on. What he's used to in India, but the way he handled the bounce, he trusted his defence. That, that was the main thing. And he didn't follow the ball when, when the ball did something off the seam. So he, he showed a lot of maturity past his years. And, and now Australia have had a look. They've got to find ways to nullify that and stop his scoring. Well, Jaswell and Kale Rahul, a wonderful opening stand. 201 it was in the end. It's the highest um, Indian opening stand for India against Australia. I think it was the highest in 33 years um, against the Australians. I think England made one in 1992 or something. I mean, these are the records that we're talking about that are falling around us. So wonderful stuff there from the opening pair. Now, of course, it would be remiss of me to move on before talking about Virat Kohli, who did, of course, make that unbeaten century. Uh, the first century for 18 months, I think it was July 23 against the West Indies was his last one. It's his 30th test ton, his seventh hundred against Australia. Only one man has bettered him, Jack Hobbs, uh, with 900. And that's way back when. I think he now equals Wally Hammond of England, who was born in, I don't know, 1800s or something. So Virat Kohli, is he back in form? Well, the, if you look at his stats in Australia, you'd say he was never out of form here. He, he's one play, he's played 13 test matches, he's got 600s, but he has had, had a lean run of late. But the, the way he came out here today and put his presence on the game, he, he, he looked like he was in control. He, he was set up for some really good batting and it allowed him to get into the series now. That, that would have been a big relief the way he played. It would be a big relief for everyone back in India to see Virat Kohli score and runs because... To win in Australia, you need your best players performing. You need your best players standing up in big moments. And now that Virat Kohli's got his confidence back, he understands these conditions, he enjoyed that 100, you could see by his celebration. So it's going to be now how he transfers that throughout the series. Can Australia stop him now once he gets his confidence? But it's a big, it's a big day for him. He's got his 30 to 100. He's come off a lean couple of years, so you can't keep class players down. Now, one of the weird things coming into this test match that was that no batter really on either side seemed to be in form. Maybe Alex Carey was. But we had Marlis Labertain wasn't scoring runs, Steve Smith wasn't, Kohli wasn't, Kale Rahul. Now it seems to have clocked for India. Kale Rahul has runs, Kohli has his century. Marlis Labertain hasn't got his. Is this, are these worrying signs for Australia? Asking the obvious question perhaps. Yeah, it, it, it is worrying signs. I, I don't think Marnus spots in, in any danger because you've got to have players behind him putting pressure on. So Marnus is going through one of those periods in his career where he's finding runs are hard to come by. So is that a technical thing? Is it a mental thing? Um, does he just need to change the mindset of the way he goes about it? Because in the first innings, yes, they bowl well, but he occupied the crease for a long time. And I heard comments from Andrew McDonald says nothing to do with technique. It's nothing to do with how hard he's working. It's more to do with the mindset and looking to put his presence back on the game. When Marnus is playing at his best, He's up and about. He's, he's annoying opposition. He's but he was up and about today. This is what worries me. But he, he was up and about today. But you had nothing to play for now out there. That, that's a tough situation to get in. And that's why we go back to that captaincy to, to recognise that moment, get the debutant out there, get Marnus out there, and they got the reward. But, yeah, he, his job now is to, to go away, not overhaul his game. He, he's, he's got a base of the game that's been done well at Test Cricket for some time. Maybe it's just a mindset thing the way he goes about it. Well, Australia, three for 12. And I feel a little bit like Groundhog Day having to ask you this question again because yesterday was India's day. Today was emphatically India's day. Was there anything in there that got you excited from an Australian perspective? Oh, well, I think the exciting thing about it, they, they stuck in there. They, they created chances. That, that's what they did in the first session. They, they cr created a chance with, with Alex Carey. had a chance down the leg side. There was a couple of run outs. There, there was... There was Travis Head probably out of position just by a little bit of that detail. Where, If you look at where the game's at, the, India are driving the game and there's not much to take over. The one thing they can, they created those half opportunities. When you're in a situation like this, you just need to take them. OK, I want your perspective as a wicketkeeper then and a pretty damn good one at that. Alex Carey, a lot of buys today. Is keeping under scrutiny? Don't worry about bias. They're not something that you're ever worried about. The one thing Ian Healy used to say to all the international keepers coming in, especially the, don't worry about the buys. As long as you're taking the catches that come your way. The disappointing ones for Alex Carey today would have been the drop catch. The, the one of Jazawal down leg side, he didn't, he, he moved, but he just couldn't get a glove. And that would be the disappointing thing for him. Bias can happen. We've seen a couple go off the crack 
and, and deviate a long way. You can't do much with that. And it was a tough surface to keep on. It's one of those surfaces that you have to stand really close for that edge that you think is going to drop short. But the catch you're going to get is the one that shoots off the wicket and bounces high overhead height. So it's a tough to get your position. But Alex Carey had a tough day, as all the Aussies did, but he'll bounce back. And to be fair to him, that uh, the stumping to get pant, it was a really good piece of bowling by Lyon, just throwing it wide of the crease. And he had to really lean for that. That was a really good bit of keeping. So there is light at the end of the tunnel, perhaps. And I also hear that you've got a, a nice club hat as well. Well, I've got one sent. I won't bring it out yet, but I've got a club hat sent from Scone. I won't give too much uh, away yet, but you'll see that in the next couple of episodes. Looking forward to seeing it. All right, then. How about your hang on a sec moment? Have you got one of those? i tell you where my hang on a sec moment was with you actually today, Izzy, when I was hanging on for dear life. <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> yeah, yes. up the top of the stadium. I, I tell you what, well, I've done it twice now. The first time they didn't give us a harness. I don't believe this. So just for listeners out there, Triple M had this sort of rather stonking idea of deciding that we do a commentary stint from the, the roof of Optus Stadium. And I tell you what, I mean, this is a 61,000-seater stadium. It's pretty high up there, isn't it, Hads? Well, I, I tell you what it was. It was unbelievable viewing. You, you get a great view from, from the top of the ground. Every, fast, every bowler looked like they were bowling fast. But did I enjoy it? I enjoyed it a lot more than I did in previous years because we had the harness on. But it was something I, I've said to... All the Triple M staff, you've got to try it once. But I tell you when I wouldn't try it is after tea. Okay, explain. Because that's when the doctor starts to come in. Ah, uh, the wind. It's a bit windy, and there would be no way in the world I would be getting up there. Well, I thought it was a, a wonderful experience. I'm very privileged to have done it, uh, getting onto the roof of Optus Stadium. My hang on a set moment, and I think you were a little bit taken aback by this as well, was that when we saw poor old Nathan McSweeney depart for his four ball duck. Who else strides to the crease than Captain, than Captain Cummins himself as the night watcher? And I think you had a few words to say about what you think about night watchers. Yeah, it's an interesting one, night watchman. Like, the, the Aussies fast bowler work, worked hard. It was tough work out there. He, he bowled near 30 overs. I, I've played in teams where you have rules where the blanket rule is you don't have a night watchman. And, and that takes a lot of anxiety out of the decision. There's... Oh, he's, the bat battering form, does he want to go out there? And you just say, no, I know Darren Lehman, when he coached, he came in and said, don't like night watchmen straight away. But to Pat's defence, he, he put his hand up. He had a lot of time out there in the dirt. He, he would have a headache after captaincy. He's got to be on all the time. So to, to put himself in the firing line, hats off. Yeah, because Nathan Lyon is often the, the man that walks out. He bowled something like 37 overs, so he must have had that in his head. And I think I probably agree with you in the fact that as long as you're very clear yeah. as to whether there's going to be a night watcher or not and everybody knows where they stand, yeah. then you can go either way. But uh, it was brave indeed. It didn't work this time, and indeed it didn't work for either Cummins and, of course, Marnus Labashain only managing to score two before he fell as well. Do over the day, was it the fact that you had to, we had to go up on that roof again? I, mean, I tell you what, we did not see... Many others sticking their hands up. But they were offered. They were offered yeah, to go up there. They were offered. that. If I could have my time over again, would I sit out on the ledge and watch for an over two? No, I don't think no. I would. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm that brave. Um, but it, it was a good experience. Yeah, and absolutely. If you do get the opportunity to do it, if you ever come visit Optus Stadium, I definitely would recommend it. All right, then. Three topsy-turvy days. It seems to be accelerating, and then I don't know even how to describe the last three. But what about tomorrow? Can we even dare venture there? How do Australia go about this chase? Seven wickets in hand. Well, I know cricket's a team game, and that the best teams get the best result. But tomorrow, it's all about the individual. It's about going out there, batting with your partnership, and just deciding, OK, I'm, not, I'm, going, I'm going to be the one not to get out. You've got no scoreboard pressure and you've got the opportunity to bat as long as you like. I know Steve Smith, if he gets himself into that zone, he can bat long periods of time. We've seen Usman do it time and time again for Australia, but it's about the individual coming up with a plan to bat long periods of time. All right. So it's all, I mean, it's all very well having that mindset. And I, and I think someone like Steve Smith definitely has it. And Manus Labashain came out with that intent as well. But what worries me is that variable bounce. How do you combat that? Well, each individual come up with a plan. The one thing I think on this surface, you can't just sit there 
and face dot ball after dot ball. You still have to have a proactive mindset. And, and that can be in your defence, making sure you're making sharp decisions with your feet, making sure the ball's hit in the middle of the bat. If you get the opportunity to get off strike, you don't want someone like Boomer to bowl 12 balls, 18 balls in a row. But there's also another thing at play tomorrow, is the longer Australia bat, the longer they can keep the bowlers out there. It's a five test series. So Boomer, for example, is gonna be a huge part in this test series. So if you can get him going into the fifth day, get him bowling, get him out there in the heat, get him having sore legs, see how he backs up. We know Mohamed Shemi's injured. There's a bit of talk that he'll come back, but you don't wanna just get knocked over just before T and Boomer only bowls 10 overs. You want him to bowl 25, 30 overs. So Australia looking to let India taste some of their own medicine there because they were out there for what's that now or almost, yeah, five sessions in total, the Australian bowlers. So it's been a torrid old few days. They've got it all to do. They're 521 behind. We're going to move now to the secret cricket club questions. And James asks, do Australia have any realistic chance of winning not only this match, but the series now? Yes. Not this match. Okay. I think it's going to be a hard slog, but yes, we can still win the series. And how are they going to do that? Well, they've got to win a couple of test matches. Oh, this, one, this one, they've got to get some confidence out of it with the bat. But uh, yes, Australia can still win the series. I haven't lost this game yet. No, OK, that's Aussie optimism there. I'll put it down. Swiftly moving on. A different James asked, is this going to hurt Australian bowlers for the coming games? Oh, I think the, the obvious answer, they'll, they'll be weary. Um, but they've got a couple of days off now. Um, they, they've got four and five days uh, day four and day five now off in this test. They've got a good um, break leading into that. It won't be about getting big overs in the nets. It'll be just about making sure they're fresh. So they're, they're experienced campaigners. They've done it time and time again. I'm not too worried at the moment. Here's an interesting one. And of course, Australia, I think the last test that these, these boys played was what, in March earlier this year. So it's been a good old few months before playing test cricket again. So Tyler asks, is the lack of cricket that half the Australian team has played, has that hurt Australia? I, I don't think so. You can look at in India where they, they've got, they had a disappointing series against New Zealand, but the one thing they were doing, they were playing hard in test cricket. But uh, Australia have done this time and time again. Their, their backroom staff have, have always been outstanding with, with their preparation. The, the fast bowling group's very experienced. They've been together for 10 years now, so uh, there's no reason to doubt their preparation at all. We're talking about the fast bowling group, and it's a tried and tested one at that. And this is a question that definitely was not would not have been asked on day one. But Dan asks, how are Australia going to take 20 wickets on more batter-friendly pitches? Dan, do not write us off. It's day three into a five-test series. That includes pink ball test, I guess, as well. It, it does. And, and these guys are as good as four bowlers as we've ever had for Australia. So don't be too concerned that we can't get 20 wickets. Ash asks, which is better, Kohli finally getting that 100 or Jayas Boz 160? Well, Kohli's done it 30 times and we've seen him do it here seven. Uh, I think the crowd enjoyed Kohli's 100, but I tell you what, for a young superstar of the game, I enjoyed Jaswell's 100. I absolutely love that. And again, from an English perspective, not seeing it against England, but he is such a talent and so exciting to watch. And just think about how many years ahead that we have to watch him do what he does best. Final question then, and this one, well, Braden's here, and, and I wonder if he actually saw um, when Manus Labashain came on and had a little chat with Mohamed Siraj, because he asks, are Australia being too friendly with India? It feels like we need to heat up. Oh, no. You're not a man averse to a few words out there. <laughs> Mate, it, it was tough test cricket. This is a tough surface. The ball was flying around. There's guys taking it on the body. There, there, there wasn't much need to, to say anything. The game was moving forward. So you, you see when the Australian got the opportunity to bat, the, the Indian cricketers were, were up and about. So I, I think as the series goes on, you, you'll see little battles start to take place. So don't stress too much about that. Well, my goodness me, another day of intriguing, amazing test cricket here at Optus Stadium. The end of day three, Australia trailing India by 521. Some really good questions coming in from the Secret Cricket Club, so please do keep them coming through because we absolutely love them. Um, but tomorrow we'll be back. Australia will be back. India will be back. I'm Izzy Westbury. He's Brad Haddon, and it's good night from us. Keep it real.
Yeah, thanks for watching the Willow Talk podcast on YouTube. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't have to miss an episode wherever you are. And while you're at it, check out these videos up here. They're mostly good.